Okay. This is uh, something, well first off and foremost, this begins the private video series that will not be accessed to most people. Uh, we're going to put these on the private aspect of YouTube, so you have to have the link in order to see the video. And we're only going to put those in select spots. Um, so we don't expect high view on these videos. If we start seeing high views, that means somebody's passing the fucking link around, and uh, we'll stop doing these if that happens. So the first thing we're going to talk about in these private things is everybody's like, they're talking about Tantra, and Tantras will change your stuff from the inside out, and you're developing the cities, and all this horse shit. But what a lot of things is, well, what about, like, the pagans? They got spells, and love spells, and the Satanists have rituals and destruction rituals. So what does Hindu have? Hindu has these weird-ass things called Vashi Quran. Vashi Quran starts out in Vedic Hinduism um, as a way of attracting things to you. So uh, you're using uh, a mala. It's more like this. When you're doing these, you either wear them on your wrist, on your throat, or whatever. It's no longer like a Japa mala. You're not counting the beads with it. You're you're using it as a device for attraction. And you're humming on that for attraction. And, uh, and you're saying these mantras, and these mantras are specified for what's specific to attract a female just to fuck, to attract uh, a wife, to attract the male just to fuck, to attract a husband, to attract wealth, to attract things to you, to bring things to you. And that's why even on both sides of the light side or the dark side, they're using Kali Ma, because Kali Ma is a form of immolation. Immolation means to destruction by drawing in. Does that make sense to everybody? Like an implosion. So you're using Kali Ma to bring that in towards you. And so when it comes to doing like Japa rituals or other rituals specifically to the, to the goddess or whomever you have in the house, um, with Kali Ma, you use what you may call Sindor. So you're taking the Sindor powder and you mix it up with specifically for this type of thing, jasmine oil. So think about anointing oil because that's what you're doing you're mixing these two up to make that red paste to anoint you know like they have the big old dots on their foreheads again you're using that to attract the idol so part of the worship before you move into these mantras you would put this stuff like on the hands of the idol on the third eye of the idol you're attracting it with this smell and you're having that same smell on your forehead so you're projecting from your Ajna chakra, what you want to have happen at the Devata or the idol. That makes sense? No questions at this point. This particular mixture is the same mixture that they would use instead of menstrual blood. So, like they have the temple, the, the menstruating temple once a year, this is the shit that they're mixing to shove out of the statue's crotch. And saying that it is the divine menstrual blood that the agoris go and play in, and everybody stares at them like, what the fuck are you doing? And all the good stuff. And that's all about how Sati's vagina fell on that part of the earth and it became the menstruating temple. And anyway, the basis of Jai. So you're putting this stuff on your head. Obviously, it's going to be on your fingers if you put it on your head. You're anointing the statue with it as well. Um, now, in order to. Uh, Continue with the black magic aspect, and this is more of the negative side. Uh, you have what they call cheermy beads. I'm going to put this in the light so you can see them. You want to have 50 to 51 cheermy beads. These represent, they're actually seeds, beads, whatever. These represent um, the heads that are supposed to be on Kali's garland of heads. So that's why you have 50 of them. 
Um, the light side will tell you that this is to keep, this is to dispel black magic. The black side will tell you this is to help draw in and it represents Kali, the black, at the same time. So in other words, what this is, it's, a, it's your potential. These are like the, uh, the ovum, like the ovum egg. This is a physical representation. So when you're doing mantra, the, the bindu, which is now, these are becoming, the, the, excuse me, the bija. These are now becoming the physical bija, like the third eye on the idol that is absorbing your mantra, which is the bindu that fertilizes the seeds for the magic that you're working. So this is how they're making the physicality between the goddess, the ovum, and in your words, the mantra is the spermazoid or the sperm cell that fertilizes the egg in order to make the creation. Does that make sense? And so, if those represent the letters, which are the seeds, the growth sound is the sperm, and then that is the mother figure, and that's how you make the creation occur. Everything makes sense up at this point. Okay. On the darker side, you have the Vajanti Vashi Mala. Like this is another kind of specific seed, and at the very bottom of the seed, as a, a specific Rudasha, which you normally see in the Shiva uh, Japa Malas. But this one is a specific 13 side and it has a little red brush representing the blood. You have to think of this as like an astral or an ethereal uh, hypnotism device. You know, follow the watch. But you have to think of it as an astro follow the watch. This is the part that hypnotizes, as they say, your, I can, your target. I can feel it kind of pulling at the uh, heart chakra. Yeah. I mean, you would wear this when you... And you would keep wearing this until it was fulfilled, by the way. Um, and you would use sandal or sandal wood specifically because that's what Kelly prefers. When you're doing the, the mantra and so forth, you're working with her, you want the sand. Um, and then, if you'll come in real tight for me. Uh, they got these smaller because these are about the size of what... When you work with Yantra, they normally come in little pieces, these squares that are gold with colors in them it etched in. And this is the first one. This is like for the light side where we're using this type of mala and we're trying to attract somebody to us. And we're we're staring at specifically dead center, and we're using that as we're meditating as a yantra to influx in our mind like a sigil for to draw things. Now, if we're trying to hypnotize and force somebody to do something, here under the bindu that's here in the middle, we would write that person's name. Okay. So that when you do the mantra, there's a section in the mantra that asks you to say this person's name out loud. So you'd make sure you wrote that in there so that you're focusing on it anyway, and that way you can say the name while you're doing the mantra. Does that make sense? So just like a destruction ritual, you call by their name. Or like with witches' spells, right? So you have to think of it like that. So this one is your drawing to you. This one is your dominating a particular target. That makes sense to everybody. So, for example, of some of these mantras, I'm not even going to give a lecture about mantra. I'm not. We're not going to get into that. It's a nice long fucking lecture. But let's say, for example, and some of these are pretty dumb. Uh, we talked about these different things. Okay. So this would be mantra for sanctity, fulfillment, and success. And you would say, um, in English, I'm not going to bother saying it in Sanskrit for folks, you can look this shit up on your own. 
Oh, Lord Ganesh, of large body, curved trunk, with the brilliance of a million suns, please make all my work free of obstacles in all ways. And it says the benefit it precisely bestows success in your projects, removes, defre- removes depression, confusion, jealousy, and fear, removes difficulties and obstacles, removes evil and negative influence, provides prosperity, progress, profit, and grants auspiciousness, wisdom, salvation, and destroys all forms of evil thoughts. Like I said, it's white magic. The light side of it. As an example. So the dark subjugation mantras, and you mostly get this from the left hand path. The the Varmachara folks. Uh Agori use a lot of these too. Um, these are mostly akin to the Agori. And uh, a lot of the uh the white lighters will use these cheer me beads to block the Agori's Tantra stuff. It's bad stuff. So Here's one I think we'd all like very much. Mantra to get your boss to do what you want. If the situation is very important and you need your boss to listen to you, do something. Recite this at least 21 times a day. Place your boss's name in the blank, like we were talking about. So you would put the boss's name here under the deal in the star. And it would be Om Hrim Rakit Chamunde. Y'all know who Chamunde is, right? Uh, isn't it the hag? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is a form of? The mother goddess. Kali, specifically. Your boss's name, Tim. Mam Vashyam Kuru Kuru Swaha. And you would do this 21 times a day, every day, until you got the results. And you would wear this particular mont- this particular mala even at work, wherever you go, so that you have all that energy here to take with you while you're building the energy between the goddess and the cheering bees. Make sense? Yeah, sounds like a lot of layered workings. Um, That's the basic overview of it. Uh, There'll be a much, much more thorough explanation in the new book, but basically this will be in the section of the book where we're talking about spells, um, curse boxes, and and other things that we're going to be calling what I'm going to call uh, outside worship. So in other words, in the new book you're going to have the God worship in the morning, you're going to have the outside worship in the middle of the day if you're going to do any of that, and then the evening will be the God's worship until you start moving into the Kundalini. Um, And the other base note important thing to talk about is uh, in Tantra specifically, the other thing that, that this is good for, other than you know trying to bring the subjugation and everything, the beads on this help um, accelerate the cities. These help connect you quicker to the goddess, and it is the goddess who releases the cities and the chakras. It's also it's important to have these because these help create that supernatural effect on things. So wearing these will help provoke the energy come out of the city. The energy come out of the chakras to create the cities. Any questions? Mm, no, not not yet. Alright. I guess we're done. <laughs>